In this um, exercise, we'll look at conduction. Conduction is an important process uh, of heat transfer. Uh, it can uh, it's in solids. It could be in soils, and it could be in bark. And um, the prediction of heat transfer in bark is quite important because mortality can arise from excessive temperature in the cambium of the of a tree. So the inputs that we have here is the initial temperature uh, of the system, in this case the tree, uh, the lethal temperature, so the temperature at which the cells, the living cells will die, uh, the flaming temperature outside the tree, or outside or uh, of the flames in the during fire, the flaming duration, and also we can account for a smoldering phase with a smoldering temperature and a smoldering duration. And here you can see how this is uh, described in this graph where we have the temperature of the flaming uh, phase and the temperature of the smoldering phase and uh, the corresponding duration. So if you change duration from 5 minutes to 7 minutes, then you'll see this change in the duration of, the, of this phase. And if you change from 2 minutes to 0, Essentially, you are saying that this fire smoldering is not important, and the whole thing is you know, during the flame it's where things happen. Then you have the the characteristics of the material of the bark or of the soil, and you have some indications of what would be the typical diffusivities of the different materials involving forest fires. So when you talk about bark, the common value to input is something between 0.12 and 0.14. So 0.13 would be a, a good value to use. And uh, if you want also to express it in conductivity, uh, so you have to know that diffusivity, density and heat capacity, they are all related with conductivity. And if you change these values, you'll have a different conductivity, which is a different way to express some thermal properties of wood, uh, of any material. So the important thing here is to see if, uh, let's say, the fire spreads and uh, uh, the passage of fire will result in a kind of uh, excessive temperature and then you can, you can also change the lethal temperature to uh, value a little bit more uh, a little bit higher or less and then by changing there you are ex uh, typically changing this threshold this limit this lethal limit and then what you have here is the different curves of temperatures at different depths. Uh, so it's 1 cm to, to 10. And what you see here is that uh, very close to the surface, the soil surface or the bark surface, you'll get a very sharp increase in temperature and then you have a very smooth decrease. And uh, if you are talking about 2 cm depth, then you have a delayed response of the system and of course you have 3 centimeters you have more and more and you can pick up the maximum value of these curves at different depths and you can depict that in this in this other graph so when you talk about 10 millimeters 1 centimeter you should have a value that corresponds to that maximum. And that's typically what is of interest for the effects of fire 
in uh, mortality of trees, for instance. You want to know at what depth the certain critical temperature was attained. And by the cross of these two curves, this curve is the decrease of maximum temperature with depth, and this is the lethal temperature. We can see that uh, uh, below 35 centi millimeters, the temperature was quite excessive. So for a tree, if bark was not uh, uh, was not deep enough, was not thick enough, then the cambium would die. And that's what you see also in this table where you have the same thing that you have here. So a decrease in the maximum temperature with depth. And you see also that uh, if you have the lethal temperature set at 350K, that the value that you have is somewhere between 30 and 40 millimeters. And that's the critical depth beyond which cells are protected. And before that, cells are exposed to excessive temperature and they will die. And of course, you can now play with duration and see what a different duration for minutes instead of seven, what it would result. And of course, what you see here is that you don't need to, have, to go uh, that far for having the cells protected. Now, it's the, the critical depth is something between 20 and 30 millimeters. Uh, after that, everything is protected. So you can play with these different uh, values and see what are the effects. And if you are getting some mortality, cell mortality or not. And I think that's a very important aspect of to take into account when we are looking at fire events.